when I when I finish a meditation, I lay down. I I'm, I think I'm the most creative uh, personally. I think that's like my moment where I just kind of relax. I'm done, and um, and then I get all kinds of information. Hello, and thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome to the Pacific Channel. I'm your host, Steve Doherty. In this video, a woman named Naomi is going to ask Dr. Joe a question about the thoughts that she has during meditation. But the audio isn't very good, so I'm going to try to state her question just the way she did. She asked, how do you tell the difference between a distracting thought that comes up and something else? For example, if my mom who passed on comes into my thoughts, is this a message? Should I analyze this in some way? And should I try to learn from it? And if they are messages and not distractions, should I let the messages go and apply them later? And then what do you do with it? Do you engage the thought a little bit and see where it goes? Or, you, or do you just let it go? So she asks a lot of questions, right? It's never good to ask so many questions at once. Dr. Joe rephrases the question for Naomi and asks and says, okay, so the question is, during your meditation, you have an impulse from the field, which is the same thing as saying the universe or source energy. Information that is authentic from the field. How do you know if it is from the field or if it is just a distracting thought? So all these questions that she asks Dr. Joe puts into one question. Then Dr. Joe starts to give his answer. Instead of me just restating what Dr. Joe is about to say, I would like to give my two cents worth here because as Dr. Joe says, there really is no right or wrong answer. You are both a transmitter and a receiver of information. That is why if you think of someone you haven't thought of for a long time, they may call you right away because they picked up on it or vice versa. There are other law of attraction teachers like Abraham who agree with Dr. Joe and say that we are both transmitters and receivers of information, of frequency, and that you can receive information during meditation from source or the quantum field, or from your inner being or higher self. It's kind of like all the same thing. Dr. Joe would call it the, call it the quantum field, right? Meditation is a particularly perfect time for you to receive information because it's all about letting go of negative resistant thoughts and allowing for connection to your normal, natural, higher vibration. The rather ironic thing about all of this is that during meditation, we are taught to quiet our minds, to stop all thought, to stop the monkey mind, to stop thinking and relax. But that's also the time when source can most easily speak to you because you have allowed your vibration to rise. This is why at one point in your meditation, what you might start to, to notice is that you are able to receive information from the field or from your inner being or higher self. But usually the inspired thoughts that you receive are towards the end of the meditation when you are fully relaxed. It is at these times that it can be very beneficial to listen to the thought and impulse, but it could be just a distracting thought I'll try to explain how to tell a difference, but first let's listen to Dr. Joe explain how to tell the difference and then we'll discuss it further afterward. Hi, what an absolute pleasure it is to be with you, Dr. Joe. I'm so grateful for your work and for being in my life so far. I'll move on to my question. I want to know how to tell the difference in a distracting thought that comes up and like something else, like an experience. Or... So, for example, if my mum who's passed comes into my thoughts, is this a message? Sometimes an old situation years ago that I haven't thought about. And I wonder, am I supposed to be analysing this in some way, learning from information? And if those are messages and not distractions, do I treat it differently? And it, or, you know, do I try and let the messages go and them later the same way you do the okay let me your 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 every third or fourth word is breaking up so let me just make sure that I understand this Naomi 
in the middle of your meditations, you want to understand the distinction between when you have like an impulse from the field, you have information coming in that's authentic. And when it's maybe just a memory or a thought about someone or something that's based on uh, uh, your mind wandering or you're, 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 you're wondering if you're, you're, this, this thought comes up and it's telling you something or you think it's telling you something. Um, there's no, there's no, is that correct? Just yet. And then what to do with it? Like, do you, do you sort of engage with the thought a bit? Like if you think, oh, this yes. is a... Okay. Okay. I'll tell you what I do. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer to this. And I don't think it's black and white either. Um, <coughs> um, gosh, I spent a lot of time, uh, a lot of hours uh, yeah, in, in that place. And um, I think the brain is precognitive uh, by nature. There's a lot of studies to show that it actually, uh, the limbic brain actually experiences the event uh, in, before the event occurs. A lot of times it signals the prefrontal cortex and there's an activation moments before the experience. So there's this kind of precognitive aspect of the brain. And I think it's, I think it's, it's gotta have a little bit of attention on the future and some of that is intuitive and we can talk about that in a minute uh and uh a lot of it just really is just planning you know just just going you know forecasting so um so uh when we open up to uh information and we slow our brain waves down and that limbic brain begins to get a little bit activated or you're tuning that tuning fork of your autonomic nervous system to energy and frequency by dialing down the neocortex. Um, if there's real resonance that's going on in that tuning fork of your autonomic nervous system, it will pick up information through the pineal gland, and 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 then it'll 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 disseminate it to higher centers in the brain. And um, sometimes you can, it, for me, it's it, for me it's a very clear signal. For me, it's like, uh, oh, oh, like. I wasn't thinking about that at all, or wow, that was very clear. That was very clear information. I trust that. I used to not trust it. Um, I used to go against it. Sometimes when your heart is very coherent and your brain is the same level of coherence, uh, the heart informs the brain and it's a very, 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 very straight shooter and it's a very wise guide. And um, I've gone against that too and uh, never worked. Uh, uh, I realized that it was ridiculous that I was even uh, actually thinking that. Now, those are the clear messages. That's the one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is everything to do with just the brain uh, wandering and you wind up in a neurological network where you're wondering about someone or something. Uh, and that default really is just you losing the present moment. Now, in those circumstances, I think you know well enough, Naomi, that that is, that is just a default and you you're, shouldn't spend a whole lot of time on that. Now, um, sometimes if the body's being deprived of uh, certain feelings or certain emotions, it will, it will signal certain parts of the brain to activate circuits on memories that you haven't thought about or people you haven't thought about in a long time because it's associating an event in the past with an emotion and it's wanting you to feel a certain emotion uh, that would be familiar and, and, um, you can spend a little time there, but, um, the, ana the analysis of that probably won't lead you, uh, uh, too far anywhere. And then there's just kind of this gray area. Um, I think that exists where, um, you have to, it's a learning curve. Um, and sometimes for me, I trust the ones that tend to feel differently than anything that I've felt before. Like it's just like a, feeling whoa like that's that's different and um sometimes i don't remember them uh, i swear i was just i was just telling the audience in in cancun i had a moment and i swear i just thought it was the most profound information i kept saying i'm gonna remember i'm gonna remember god dude you have to remember this and then i came out i could remember anything about it i was so mad i was just laid there they tried every try to get back you know and I just knew it was really profound information and I lost it. I could slip back into the limbic brain and I went right back into the conscious mind, into my identity and door shut and I missed it. And I think there's times when the door opens and it's Pandora's box. Um, 
and it happens to a lot of people. And we talk to a lot of the elite forces that we're working with now that that the box is going to open, and 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 it, it, it's the it's it's kind of vent. And so a lot of times the door between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind opens up, and here comes the memories, and here comes all this information, and it's just information that really has to be released. If you have a tool and a technique and a and and the and the, the proper methodology, you could actually you could actually work on having the body go through it. And just like a child, you're comforting it, you're loving it, you're letting it go through it. You know it's going to be over sooner or later, and you, you just stay curious on what's on the other side of that. So the the box Pandora's box opens up, and people have a lot of things that that come up. It's happened to me. And it's a real, sometimes a really yucky feeling, and you gotta let that. You gotta just got. For me, I just gotta. I want to sit. Let's 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 finish it now. <laughs> I don't care if it takes however long. I just want to get over this. I'm just gonna sit through it. But in that kind of gray world between the door opening between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind, there's both memories that come in. There are associations to events from the past. Um, and at the same time, you're connecting the energy and information, and sometimes it's kind of muddled. Sometimes uh, there's something that oh oh I just hadn't thought about that, and then you know the, you get a text or you get a call or something from someone or something, and uh, that's related, and you go well okay I got to trust that a little bit more, and, and then your ability to refine the the experience, uh, getting your nervous system tuned in a little bit better. And the repetition of doing it enough times, I think, gets you to that point where the impulse that's in frequency or energy that's just before it's going to be an event in three-dimensional reality, I think we can get access to that. And many people in this community, a few I've met, have gotten really good at that in just being able to know. In the process of meditation, if my intention is I'm working on something and uh, uh, those things occur, I only take note of it. I take note of it, like I take note of whatever that impulse was, and I usually have a, a journal or something. Just, just I want to get good at recording whatever that was, but I'm not going to stop my meditation because of it, or I'm not going to meander down that, that exit uh, off the off my path and get lost in that. I just, for me, I, I don't do it unless it's provocative enough that it consumes all of my attention. And it's uh, it's it's novel and it's it's new. That then I just abandon whatever I'm doing, whatever, and I go in that direction because I trust it. Um, so I think there's I think there's a spectrum. I think there's some real black and white areas, and then there's this kind of gray area that I think uh, will will um, will narrow as as you do the uh, the work a lot more, and and you get more coherence uh, in, in your nervous system. So so I don't really spend a lot of time. On them, I do. I do have those still to this day. Um, but if it if it's if it's just something that I know already, or if it's something that I know about somebody or something, or 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 sometimes uh, in the early mornings uh, when I when I finish a meditation, I lay down. I I'm, I think I'm the most creative uh, personally. I think that's like my moment where I just kind of relax. I'm done. And um, and then I get all kinds of information. And uh, some of it I just contemplate for and do nothing with. I just I just notice it. I just see how uh, where it fits. Uh, I, I was talking to my son about this. He, he he has those moments where he gets a lot of information, but doesn't know what it means. And um, I said, you know, you're just piercing through like a, a, a layer of consciousness, and you're just kind of looking around, and then you go back down. And what was that? I don't know. Sometimes I go, I don't know what that was, and boom. And a couple of weeks later, you pop up again. You look around, and you pop up over here again, and you pop up over here again. And all of a sudden, it, boom! The whole thing opens up, and ah, it makes sense now. So, uh, I would treat it as information, uh, and information you want to entertain. If if it's known to you, uh, make note of it, and and keep going. If it's an unknown, uh, make note of it and see if it plays out or, or or unfolds in your in your future, in some way. If it's profound. Abandon whatever you're doing and go all in, in, in. So regarding thoughts we have during meditation and whether or not it's coming from our monkey mind or the quantum field, Dr. Joe basically says that there is no right or wrong answer, but that it is more likely a distracting thought. 
and that you will know if it is from the field because of how it feels. It will feel profound. Now, the interesting thing he also said is that he has had profound thoughts during meditation, promised himself not to forget it, but then forgot it. If the thought you have is profound, more than likely it's best to break out of your meditation, write down the thought about what it was, and then continue with the thought until it peters out. And then you can get back into your meditation later. I think the most important thing to understand in this video is that both types of thoughts can be thought. The most likely situation is that you have distracting thoughts. It's less likely that you're going to have some profound, world-changing download of information from the quantum field. But it can and does happen all the time. The other thing that I'd like to point out is that messages that you get from source, the universe, or the quantum field may seem unimportant. For example, if after you meditate, you may get the urge to call someone and that impulse came from source or the quantum field. So the information that you receive doesn't have to be profound. It may be just a small urge, but that urge may lead you to something much bigger and better. You may meet the love of your life that way or get a new business idea or opportunity, or you may receive some information that helps you with your health. So then, the logical next question still is, how do you know if the thought that you are thinking is from your higher self or inner being, the quantum field or the universe? The answer is pretty simple, but sometimes hard to distinguish. If the thought you think feels good, that's usually from, from source. If the thought you think feels bad, that's from your mother. Kidding. That's your monkey mind. And if the thought you think feels like a hell yeah, then that is definitely from source. It's really easy advice. When you think of something that you want to do and it feels like a hell yeah, then do it. If it doesn't feel like that, then don't. When you open your heart and mind up to the quantum field or source energy, you will then align your vibrational frequency with source and life will be a much smoother ride. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Also, please subscribe if you haven't already done so. And please share this with five of your friends so that you can qualify to win a free ticket to one of Dr. Joe Dispenza's week-long workshops. Also, we love to read your comments. I'd like to give a shout out to Alexandra Becca Baddens, I'm sorry if I butchered your name, and Josh Brown for being so supportive of the channel. And now, please comment below about how you can tell when a thought that you are thinking is coming from the quantum field, the universe, your inner being, or if it's just a distracting thought. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.